Hello everyone, my name is Vikas and in this session we will talk about the chain code. So this session is continuation of the previous video which I have made on the Hibernator fabric and where we have talked about how we can set up the network uh, and what all files are involved there. And then we have talked about this data database which is LabelDB and CouchDB and what is uh, all about the state database and why it is being used in Hyperledger Fabric and what is the chain code stub interface. So this session is uh, very specific to chain code and we will talk about that how you can start writing the chain code in the Hyperledger Fabric. So this is the blog post uh, which you can just go and this is the link Hyperledger Fabric understand chain code and which you can just go through and you can read about also in case you are interested. So, before we go and jump to the sections which we have in the chain code, okay, the very first thing uh, I'm sure that you are not aware, uh, very well aware about the chain code which we already explained our, in our last video, that chain code is a smart contract uh, and this is a major, uh, this is a major uh, uh, portion where the developers spend most of the time. So when we talk about the Hyperledger Fabric uh, developer, so they develop the chain codes and they write all kind of functionality which is being used in the real time in the chain code itself. So you write the functions to query the ledgers, to update the ledgers and many more uh, in the chain code itself. So now the chain code in the Hyperledger Fabric can be written in uh, many ways uh, as you can read about in this post as well. We have mentioned that there are mainly three ways, Go language, Node.js and Java. In the current version, only Go language and Node.js is supported and Java is not uh, right now supported, it, but it will be in the future. But you can just see how flexible it is right now. So like uh, if you have gone through our previous video on Ethereum, we also talk about that the EVM, Ethereum Virtual Machine, it doesn't matter that which language you have used to write the smart contract, whether you, use, you, you have used in Solidity or you have used Viper, it doesn't matter. They need the bytecode and uh, you can provide them the bytecode and it will work. So uh, same way here, you can write your smart, your chain codes in Go language, Node.js, maybe for going forward in Java and then you can start using that one. But this post is specific to Go language and which is from Google and which is uh, very powerful uh, which I have seen till now. I haven't explored this in the detail but I just started to explore about the Go language. I see some powerful features which we have in the Go language. So let's jump to the chain code. Uh, so chain code I just mentioned there are, there are a few sections which each developer has to have in their each in their chain code. So that is uh, total main six sections which we have. The very first section is the import section where you will import all the libraries, all the other functions which you needed, then the struct section we will talk about later, then the init and invoke function which we already discussed in the last video uh, in the chain code stub interface, then there is a custom function which you can write and there is a main function. So this is the six main sections which you will find in each and every chain code. So these are minimum sections basically, you, you can have more than more than six also but at high level if you want to understand if you want to start the chain code this is a starting point so let's go through each and every section here with few examples so the very first section which you see the import so this is kind of you can uh, keep thing in the mind maybe the other programming language which you may have used in the past like C, C++, Java or .NET if you equate this to Java, so this is the import statement. Whenever you have any external uh, uh, interfaces or classes, the common functionality, you generally do import. You don't write the same piece of code uh, again and again each in each class, right, in the Java. So what you do, you create a separate package and you just refer that package from other another classes. So same thing we do here. So this. Uh, FMT, uh, you can see the import statement here. FMT is a simple for print uh, uh, statements. If you want to print something, uh, then this FMT contain all the function for that one. That this shim, shim is a uh, 
chain code interface and if you remember in the last video we already talked about the chain code stub interface which has multiple functions inbuilt to get the state to uh, put the value to a state and to delete the state and query functions are there which will be a uh, part of this package so you need to inst uh, import this package if you want to use that the functions in your chain code if you don't import it will not work basically so these are the two minimum packages which I would say uh, either each and every chain code uh, needs to have but it can have more as per your requirement maybe uh, the string conversion functions the uh, library for string conversions and the array, array handling and other other, other one. but this is a minimum one which you need to have in each and every chain code the second one is where you will define your chain code so this is the syntax which you can see so now our chain code is test chain code as you can see this is the syntax which you will use to define your chain code okay and uh, this is there is no much thing to cover here this is very basic uh, syntax which you can remember then the next section is the init function so as you remember when we have talked about in the last video so we have mentioned that the chain code every chain code should implement the chain code interface and the chain code interface you will have two function one is the init function one is the invoke function so init function is called during the instantiation or during the initialization or whenever you upgrade your chain code that is the two uh, time when it is being called okay and this is how it look like if you can see here the functions so, so this is uh, referring the uh, strut which we have defined in the above section and this is your init and the input argument for this one is the chain code stub interface which we already talked about uh, in the last video so i will not go into detail about this one here so you can see here there are you can write the logic whatever logic you want to implement but you have to keep these two things in the mind so you have to return you have to return either success or error message so these are the two functions which you can use uh, shim success or shim error as per your uh, scenarios as per your functionality so success you have to pass a payload in case you don't have any payload you can pass nil and in case of error you can pass an error message so based on your requirement you can choose either of these uh, functions in the end in the return value then there is an invoke function invoke function is again uh, which is in the chain code interface which you have to implement if you don't implement your code will not work and this invoke function as we already talked about this is uh, used to have interaction with the ledger to query the ledger to append the ledger and other function which you can do so this is the syntax which you can see about the invoke this is similar to init uh, so the only name got changed here but you can do much more so just one example if you see this is the function if you remember so this function will be uh, is from this chain code stub interface so this function will help you to get the function so this uh, your application your client application can call uh, send you different parameter or different function call as per the requirement right maybe if you take one example you have a ui you have a form where the person can get the value or set the value so as per the requirement they will choose the option so this function will tell you that which function they have invoked and what parameter they have passed so this will get the function name for you and the arguments so the function will be get storing the fn value uh, fn uh, and the argument will get stored in the argument args so then this is the variable which we have defined for result and the error now you will get check the function that which function is being called you will check if fn double is equal to set value if the value function is called set value you will call a custom function so this is a custom function which you will define in the next section so that you are calling and you pass in the stub and the arguments which you have and then you will capture response for that function and you then check if it is not set value then uh, if if it is get value yes if it's get value then again you will call a custom function which is get value you will pass the stub and the arguments and then you will capture response back and then you will check the error whether there is any error or not if error yes you will stop and what this shim dot error will do it will roll back uh, each and everything whatever has been done in that uh, 
from the starting it will be rolled back okay either everything will be committed or nothing will be committed so that is a feature which we have for the shim error and then if it's not error then you can pass a success message back so this is very high level but you can write your own functionality uh, if you need it and you can write the different kind of functions we already talk, talk about uh, that what all functions you have so this function may vary as per your requirement because sometimes I have just shown here two, two functions only but maybe in the reality you can have 10 or 20 functions as well okay so this is the invoke sections basically uh, then there are uh, custom function section so this custom function section if you remember we this is being called from your invoke function so you are passing the stub and the argument to this function and then it will perform the record operation so for this one if you can just check first of all it will check that uh, are we getting two arguments or not if yes it will go further if no it will return an error message right so this is how you can write the functionality this is very basic which I have written here so this put state so this is going to store if everything is fine if we have two arguments it will store these two argument which is key and value to your ledger so this is not going to store instantly this will follow the full cycle this will be sent to uh, the uh, the endorsing peer then for endorsing peer then they will come back to the client application then it will go to the order application then it will put the uh, transaction in an order and into a block then that block will be get committed to the blockchain uh, once it's being validated and verified then it the state will get saved but this is uh, just to start your uh, uh, put state function this you can use and this is all uh, this is basically as per the requirement you can use so we're not going to talk about in the detail like what all things you can do in chain code so in this section we're just talking about that what how you can edit chain code basically then this is one example for set value function and same way you have a get value function down below um, where you can write the function to the get value so based upon the key which you're getting you can get the value basically from the state database so again this may be based as per the current but this is just very basic example we have put here then the last one is the main section so every chain code should have a main section because this is the starting point for the chain code as you can see the syntax here function main and like every Java class uh, if you want to call the Java class then you will have a main say, main function right same way you will have a main uh, function here in the e chain code so you can see here we are creating uh, starting this test chain code which we have developed above then based on the error if is uh, there is no error um, uh, uh, then it will say it is successful if it is error it will not it will print this error message so this is what this is all the sections which you will find uh, majorly in each and every chain code uh, so this is the minimum sections you may find more sections also and uh, more functionality which is being implemented but this is the minimum sections which you may find in each and every chain code so I'm hopeful that you like this video and now you get some idea about the chain code what is chain code and how it uh, look like at high level this is this may not be in a detail but this will give you some idea about chain code that how it look like and how you can read uh, read about all these sections thanks for watching